This morning our subject is Gems from the Garden of Saints. Part 4. I started this series just to record some of the great swamis I met in my life and what I have learned from them. The scripture says in the spiritual life, Adau Sadhu Sangha. In the beginning you need the company of the holy. In the kindergarten school, we need, we go to the teachers, the teachers, the alphabet, the teachers, how to read, how to write. Similarly, in the spiritual life, we need teachers. They will teach us how to love God, how to live with God, how to have a relationship with God. Those things are extremely important in a spiritual life. Why? Hmm? We experience every day how much joy and suffering we get living with our friends and family. We every day we encounter so many problems such as disease, mistrust, divorce, divorce death. Those are all parts of human life. But all human beings are seeking one thing, knowingly, unknowingly. That is bliss, ananda. That permanent bliss or happiness is only possible in spiritual life, in God. Maya cannot give permanent happiness, momentary happiness, not permanent happiness. Many we do not, of course, believe. We do not see God, but God sends holy people to us so that we can get the glimpses of that holiness, godliness. Shankara mentioned these three things are rare in human life. First, human birth. Second, desire for liberation. Third, the company of a great soul. What does the holy company do to us? Holy company is just like a boat, a ferry boat which helps us to cross the turbulent ocean of Maya. You see, if you practice some spiritual disciplines, if you go to a holy place, the result does not come instantly, it takes time. But the result of holy company comes instantly. Example, if you go to a perfume shop, if you like it or don't like it, the fragrance will penetrate into your nostrils. You cannot stop it. If you go near the ocean, you like it or don't like it, this gentle breeze of the ocean will cool your system. You cannot, you cannot stop it. If you go near a fireplace, you like it or don't like it, you will get the heat. That is the way Holy Company works. It gives instant boost in our spiritual journey. Next question, how shall we recognize the holy people? In the eleventh book of the Bhagavatam, we find a beautiful, some beautiful verses which I shall read to you. He who sees the Atman in all creatures as a glory of the worshipful Supreme Lord 
and sees all creatures as grounded in the Lord, the soul of all. He is the best among the devotees. He who has love for the Lord, friendship to his devotees, kindness to ignorant people, and indifference to his antagonists, he is a devotee of the second grade. He who worships the Lord with devotion in images alone, but shows no consideration to his devotees and other fellow beings, he is the third grade devotee. A person who, while contacting the objects of the senses with the respective senses, does not react with revulsion or with joy, seeing the whole sensate world as maya. He is indeed the best of devotees. He who, due to the continuous experience of the Lord, is never overpowered and confounded by birth, death, hunger, fear, greed, weakness, and other failings, natural to a soul in this transmigratory existence, arising as they do from the functioning of the body, senses, vital forces, mind, intellect. He is indeed the best of devotees. He in whose mind there is no place of our desires, their resultant actions, and their residuary tendencies, who has Lord alone as his support, he is indeed the best among the devotees. In this way, we find various verses in the Bhagavatam which tells us who is the best among the devotees. Shankara says, watch three things. First, abrijino akama hato shrutriyo. The real science of a true teacher is he knows what he is teaching. He experienced what he is teaching. First, shrutriyo. He knows the scriptures, the inner meaning, and the word meaning. Second, of Brigino, his character must be flawless. Otherwise, he cannot teach spirituality. He can reach, reach, teach philosophy, religion, but he cannot teach spirituality. He will have to be pure. Third, Akamahato, desireless. He will not seek anything in, the, in return from his teachings. These are the three signs Shankara mentioned in the great jewel of discrimination. In the animal kingdom, we find the birds and beasts grow up naturally without any training. But human beings continually struggle to build the character. <laughs> character is the most important thing in spiritual life. It takes life, whole life, to build the character. Sometimes we talk about integrated personality which comes by developing the four aspects of human life. First, physical aspect, moral aspect, intellectual aspect, spiritual aspect. When you develop all these four aspects, our character becomes integrated. That is vital in a spiritual life. We cannot change the body too much, but we can change our character. Today say sinner could be a saint tomorrow. In a spiritual life, we need a role model whom we can follow without doubt. Jesus said, I am the way. He who followeth me shall not walk it in darkness. Sri Ramakrishna also said, I have made the mold. You people have you people come and cast in that mold. I created fire, you get the heat. I cooked food, you come and enjoy this food. Twelve years, he continuously practiced this sadhana and left all his spiritual treasures for us. He was a role model. The model must be perfect, otherwise there will be a problem. 
In America, what did they do? They first, they make a car. They test that car many ways. Then when they see that this car is perfect, then it goes to the assembly line. And they build millions of cars, which run all over this country. That we need. We need a role model on who we can trust, we can build our character according to that model. In my last two lectures in this series, I talked about Swami Sharudeshananda, a disciple of Holy Mother, an ideal monk. I met him in Vrindavan in 1977 as well as in 1986. If you just sit near him, you can feel something. You will not have to make any effort. You see automatically your mind is going in the higher plane of consciousness. He created such an atmosphere. He was then, when I first met him, he was in his late ages. What renunciation, what purity, majesty. He, is, was, a, he was an attendant of Holy Mother for many, many years. I think maybe 10, 11 years he was with Holy Mother. His attendant, Shuklatmananda, recorded the diary, which was published in Udbodhan magazine in 110 and 111th year. And I shall now talk to you about from that diary, which is very, very inspiring to me. There are some incidents and episodes that are so small, but very meaningful, very effective. He was talking to a young monk who is a cashier of the Vrindavan ashrama. You know, let me tell you something. It will help your mental peace. At the end of the day, when you tally your cash, if it does not go right, you will not get sleep at night. Your spiritual discipline will be disturbed. Let me tell you how to handle the cash. This monk, most of the time, lives in God consciousness. He is giving a practical lesson to a young monk who is the cashier of the monastery. Before, when you give any money to somebody, first keep, mean, keep the entry inside your note, in your ledger, and then open the money and then give to this person. And when you receive the money, first put the money in the cash box and then write in the <laughs> write <laughs> then write in the in the in your notebook in your ledger book. Do you know what? Swami Brahmananda also told Swami Vishuddhananda. Swami Ramakrishnananda, a disciple of Ramakrishna, was asking money to this young Brahmachari who is the cashier. He gave some money, so he was taking money. Shai Brahmananda watched it and cautioned him. Hey, you are giving him money, do you write any, any receipt that he received the money? No, Maharaj, I, he is a disciple of Ramakrishna and I must trust him. Oh, no, 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 you must write down. <laughs> Every time he takes money, he says, Swami, here is a voucher, sign, and then take the money. <laughs> then when Swami Ramakrishnananda asked him, that, what is this? Why are you asking to sign the voucher? Well, the Maharaj asked me. Oh, immediately signed it. Then, after a few, after a couple of months, he asked, the, is there any money? Well, Swami, I, I have no more money in your cash, so you have taken all money. 
Oh, no, 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 I have not taken any money, so uh, there must be some money. Maharaj, I have all your research. <laughs> but he helped me. You know, how these disciples of Ramakrishna, God, realized souls, how practical they were. <laughs> He was telling his attendant, you know, so many people send gifts to me. My room is full. Distribute to the poor monks. Vrindavan, there are many poor mendicants. Or give to the other monks. Only you take whatever you need. For me, if you think that I need anything, keep. Otherwise, don't keep anything in my room. Do you know why he is he telling? He's cautioning this monk. Because if you have too many accumulations, your mind will go to keep where to put those things. Your time and energy will be spent to preserve all these stocks, all the gifts. Clear from my room. You know, he is protecting the monastic life of this young boy who you are serving him. Not too many possessions you should have. <laughs> I remember one of my friends in Los Angeles, he had four cars. Only one person, four cars. I tell him, your mind will go away to take care of the four cars. Why? Just hobby. I have money, so I must have four cars. <laughs> mind gets scattered. One day the Swami was seated on his bed and he was smiling. Well, Swami, why are you smiling? He did not say anything. Then this boy put his head on his, on his foot and then said, you must bless me, putting your, my, your hands on my head. He put and said, I bless you, you serve, learn how to serve people. You know, Mother told me that by serving others, you can conquer the minds, even the ferocious animals. Just serving, loving. But as you have seen Ringling Brothers Circus, those ferocious lions and tigers <coughs> are so much tamed by those, the animal trainers. They feed them, animal trainers feed them, serve them. So all these ferocious animals, Play like friends with this man. Sarb, learn how to sarb. He was teaching. Then one day this young boy had headache. Then Swami was asking, what is the matter? Swami, I have terrible headache, but I have my knee. You know, he used to meditate long hours. As a result, he had some kind of arthritis in his knee. You just rub my knee, then your headache will go away. <laughs> but how? <laughs> your headache does not go away that way. Are like, you try? <laughs> then the more you will rub my knee, you will be unmindful, you will not think about this body, and then there is a result of serving others. He will Overcome your body consciousness. He was teaching how to overcome body consciousness by doing selfish action. Unselfish action, sorry. So this boy was serving him and memorizing the Bhagavad Gita. Generally monks do. What are you doing? Well, I'm memorizing the Gita. Do you know the meaning of the words? No. It will not work that way. Listen, my boy, how to study the scriptures. Take one verse and learn how to break shondhiya. In Sanskrit, they are joining the words. How to break the words. Then know the meaning of each word. Two, three times if you do that, then you know how to, how to, how to get the meaning. Then you memorize. He was teaching how to study the scriptures. You take care of my body, but I must take care of your soul. I must take care of your spiritual side. Give and take. 
I am taking something from you, I must also give something to you. <laughs>